We have an amazing um, guest speaker who I would say is just family at this point <coughs> coming to present. Uh, and for our village initiative, we are committed to really creating and curating solutions to help you learn how to save, invest, and own your legacy. We want to help you learn how to save your money and strategies on how to invest it. That's why we have our magnificent Michelle Brathwaite who helps you figure out your finances to get everything in place. Um, and then how do we help you transition that and leverage that to own? So whether it's real estate, own your own business, how do we help you start to own? Because in order for us to grow as a community, we need to own things, right? So my name is Denisha McDonald. I am the founder of Our Village Initiative. Uh, and with Michelle Brathwaite, who is not here with us tonight because she's not feeling well. So definitely just uh, say a prayer for her. Um, we started the Build Black Wealth series about three years ago now. Um, and she was doing something on her own. I was doing something similar on my own. And we said, hey, why don't we collaborate, right? We're stronger together. Let's do that. Um, so we wanted to be that example and be the village, right? Um, so kind of we, we've been putting these sessions on for the past three years just to make sure that we are having solutions based conversations in the community and not just kind of these are the issues, but how can we resolve them or solve them ourselves um, while other people are working on it. For those of you who are with us for the first time. Um, the Build Black Welt series is the second Wednesday of every month. So we try to make it easy for you to remember second Wednesdays, put it in your calendar, save it. Uh, we discuss a different topic every month. So this month we're talking about home ownership. Um, next month, we're going to talk about life insurance. Um, and you can see kind of what we have planned for the rest of the year. Please make sure to register and reserve your spot for those dates and invite a friend or family member. Um, I want to put in a plug for the e for all program. Um, if there are any of you who want to start a business or you have a business and you're trying to figure out how to grow your business, um, I strongly recommend you apply for this accelerator program. Um, applications are due next Wednesday or Thursday on the 22nd. Um, I participated in this last year into this year. Um, I actually won. Um, one of the grand prizes for it. And it was phenomenal in helping me really understand how to grow our village initiative and how to be strategic and impactful to make sure that um, I can continue to do good within my community. So I encourage you to, if you have a business or you're thinking of a business and not sure what to do, um, it's an intense 12 weeks of classes, um, but it's worth it. You get three mentors that you meet with every week um, you have homework assignments, but you learn so much. It's like a business course in like 12 weeks. Um, and it's, it's very, very beneficial. So I encourage you guys to um, apply. I have the link up there. You can just search E4L Roxbury, um, or we will send it out after this session. I'll send an email with the link for you guys to register as well. Um, a lot of phenomenal businesses came out of this program. Our initiatives uh, this year is to really increase our community and our village mindset. I believe strongly that we've gotten away from it where we think of I, I, I and me and trying to see how we can start to really look out for each other and be intentional about the way we do things so that we can grow as a community and therefore grow as individuals. Um, and then to increase our community savings and investing. So we have our savings challenge that's underway right now. If you're interested in joining that, um, send me an email and we can add you to that list. We're trying to see if as a collective, we can save two, over $250,000 together. Uh, we have over $200,000 pledged. We will see if people are committing to that and checking in with them uh, to make sure that they are able to accomplish their goals. And then we want to continue to provide funding and programming to increase housing for our workforce. We have a lot of partnerships with developers. So um, housing coming online in the next couple of years. Uh, we have um, Thumbprint Realty speaking tonight um, for again, some more opportunities for people to really think seriously and intentionally about purchasing a home. It's one thing to say, I wanna buy a house and take the class, um, but it's another thing to do all that's required um, so that a lender says yes, and they want to lend you money so you can purchase a home. And there's work that goes into that. So we want to make sure we line people up so that they are successful. 
Um, so without further ado, we have uh, Mr. Alex E. Edwards. He is the broker for Thumbprint Realty. Um, and we are Massachusetts' most trusted brokerage. We are black owned and operated. Um, proud of that, very proud of that. Um, and Alex has been committed to the community, committed to uh, really helping people build wealth and understand what their options are. Oops, hold on, sorry. Um, for as long as I've known him. <laughs> um, so without further ado, we have Mr. Alex E. Edwards. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you. All right, all right. I'm happy to be here again. Um, we're gonna have a great night. So first thing first, um, I wanna make sure everyone could use the chat. So if you could use the chat and you wanna make sure that Michelle's feeling great and get right back at it, I need you to drop a seven. Drop a seven in the chat. Okay, okay, I see these sevens. Okay, 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 y'all like Michelle, I get it. All right, this is what I'm talking about. We could use the chat now, right? So every time you feel something, if I say something that you're like, man, I feel that, I need to see a seven. That's, sim that's simple, I just need to see that seven. You say, man, Alex, you hit it right on the point. I, I love what you're saying. All I need is a seven. The more, the more I know that, uh, I'm going your way, the more I could talk about that particular subject, right? But if I don't see sevens, I'm just gonna move on, all right? All right, so I'm Alex E. Edwards. Um, as Denisha said, um, I'm the principal broker of Thumbprint Realty. Um, and this is my picture. Um, I was in fourth, fourth grade. And look at that, the interest, houses. I wanted to design cars, but I can't draw. So that didn't happen. But it's something amazing about when you write something down. When you write something down, it, it, ha it, 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 it turns into reality, right? So if we're not writing our, our goals down, if we're not saying, putting something together and saying, okay, let me write this down because I'm serious and I don't wanna lie to myself, it will not happen. I wrote this down in fourth grade, right? Everyone say it is a, Thumbprint Realty is the uh, all black brokerage in Boston, but it's New England. In, in, in hey, the entire Alex, do you mind if I stop you just for a quick moment? I think we were so excited to have you on that we forgot to ask everyone if they could take a brief moment and please make sure that you are sharing this on your Facebook because we are live on Facebook right now. If you were to go to our village initiative on Facebook and just take one minute, 60 seconds, go to our village initiative and share this onto your wall. That way the information you guys are getting tonight, you'll be able to share with all of your friends and family. Yes, like George just put in the chat, please like us on Facebook. You will get all of our updates, different flyers, different resources and reminders for our our resource nights every second Wednesday of the month. Please just take 60 seconds, go on over to our Facebook page. Please make sure you like and share tonight's video so that this information can be shared with your friends and family. Thank you so much for that. And sorry for interrupting you, Mr. Edwards, no, but you can continue. No, not at all. I, I appreciate that as more people could drop sevens on Facebook. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much for looking out for us. Um, so yeah, so let's let's get into the mindset, right? Let's get into the mindset of really taking care of us, you, yourself. If you can't take care of yourself, you can't help anyone else. So make sure we writing these things down and making sure we are committed to the, to the words we put on the paper, right? Um, when someone does something to you, um, you upset, you get, you get mad, you might cuss them out, but when you do something to yourself or fail uh, or don't write something down or don't complete your goal, what do you do? Do you go in the mirror and yell at yourself? So you have to hold yourself accountable as well, right? Write things down. Let's go. All right. Why are we here? Home ownership. Why is it important? 
security, right? No one can say, hey, guess what? I don't want you here today. Um, I want you to move next month in the next 30 days. Or in Massachusetts, I want you to move in the next 30 days, but you can stay here for the, for the next year. And but eventually you're gonna have to move if I take you to court, right, finally. But security, knowing that your, your, your family is safe, knowing that no one could come and say, hey, don't play in the yard. Hey, your time is over. Or actually using it to get to the next level. Home ownership changed my life, changed my life. I know a lot of you heard my story at 20 years old about my first investment property. And I never looked back. If I didn't do that, Thumbprint will, I would still probably be working at the bank. Thumbprint won't be alive, right? So home ownership gave me a chance to jump and say, all right, corporate America, you're not for me. I am going to start my own business at 23. I'm going to quit my job and it is what it is. I will figure it out. But I did this on real estate's back. On real estate's back. It's all because of real estate. All right, so some say, where do I start? Drop a seven if you don't know where to start when it comes to real estate. Drop a seven. Okay. Okay. I see. I like this. I like this. Seven is my, my favorite number too. So, all right. So we don't know where to start, right? We don't understand real estate. Everyone say go buy real estate, but we don't understand how to buy real estate. Where do I start? Do I go to the bank first? Do I go see Dumpin' Realty first? Do, where do I go? Right. And then I don't even know what I'm, what I'm putting down. Right. I don't even know. So drop a seven if you think you have to put down 20%. Right? And so now I have poor credit. I don't have no savings. It's no way. Matter of fact, God didn't make me like that to buy a home. Now nah, that's not it. that's not in my cards. Now nah, that's wrong. You deserve a home. You deserve you deserve equity. You deserve shelter. It's, we just going to teach you how to get there, right? We're going to teach you how to fix your credit. We're going to teach you how to save because it's actually easier. It's actually easy. It's not hard. Buying homes is not hard. Going to college, getting that degree, that's hard, right? Even probably get, getting that loan for school, hard, right? But buying a home isn't hard. All right, so we all know COVID happened. The banks got scared. Of course, everyone's losing their job. Bank, everyone's saying that the real estate is a real estate crisis coming. Uh, real estate is going down. Uh, it's is the best time to purchase once this is over. It's, it's no more real estate. It's going to turn into a buyer's market, right? Everyone got scared, right? You, we, now you need a six twenty, right? I'd rather 680, 720, right? So, and then just all the negative items on your actual credit is hurting you, right? Lenders want you to explain everything. Like, what's your blood type? When's the last time you ate? What did you eat? They want you to explain everything because everyone's scared. They're, we don't know when it's going to... Um, be normal again when I'm not going to wear a mask, when I can spend time with my, with my uh, family, right? So look at this. We look, this is the best chart. I think everybody needs to take a picture of this, screenshot this, because this is the chart that's going to make you and help you understand. So when you look at a house, you're going to say, oh, okay, I need 6,000. I got, I got 12. Right. This is the chart that's going to put everything together. It's, it's so simple. If you ever see a home at 500, now, you know, if I put 3% down, I need 15,000. If I, if I put uh, 3.5 down, I need seven, uh, 17,500. 
That's simple. I need you to take a picture of this, screenshot it, because this is, put it on your, your mirror, put it on your door so you can understand the prices and, and the down payments you actually need to get ahead. Because if you don't know, for those who said 20%, you was wrong, but it's not your fault. It's not your fault at all, right? And this is why Denisha, Britt, and Michelle put these programs together so you can understand, right? So if I'm buying something at a million dollars, I just only need, I need 30,000 down. I need 30,000 down for a million dollars, right? If I'm buying some, if I'm putting 3.5 down, I just need 35. That's not 20%, right? And everyone gets scared of that million dollars, but don't get scared of the, the, the price of the home. Only two things matter. The rate, right? What are you, what's your mortgage and your rent, right? That's the only thing matters. So I, I don't want people to ever say, oh, I don't want to buy a million dollar home. No, this is what I want you to say. Some, next time you see a million dollar home, this is what I want you to say. How much uh, rent am I getting? And what's my monthly payment? That's all I want. That's all I need you to say. That's it. So because if you are if you are getting. Let's see, let's look at the if you are getting. Ten thousand dollars and your mortgage is five five thousand dollars do you really care how much your debt is if you running away with the five thousand dollars i don't think so i don't think so so i don't want you to look at the price anymore don't don't look at the price that's not wealth don't look at the price look at how much you could make and the opportunity you feel me that's what i want you in, in anything you do in life look at the opportunity don't look at the price make sense So again, timelines, right? We said this, we're gonna write it down, right? Everyone, if you have a te if you if you have your phone, if you keep your notes in your phone, uh, if you if you have a piece of paper, write it down. What's your saving timeline? If you really serious about buying a home or going to the next level, I need you just to write it down. What is your savings timeline? Like today, I, I want us to do it today. I want us to be committed today. I want us to be committed right now. If I'm here speaking to you, I need you to be committed because I'm committed to you right now. So I need you to be committed to yourself, right? I just need a piece of paper, right? Or, or if you save it in your phone, but I, I need that. What's your saving timeline? All right. When are you, when are you going to uh, improve your credit? What timeline is that? Is it going to take you six months? Is it going to take you eight months? Is it going to take you a year? But I need you to put it on paper. If it's not on paper, it's not real. You, you're lying to yourself. You, you, you're not committed to yourself. Put it on paper. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Lease, end date. When is this stuff happening? Move in date. When is the big move in date? When, I'm, when am I coming to your home with a big Samson TV? Put that date down. When am I giving you a TV and saying, I, I appreciate you with, uh, for working with Thumbprint? What's that date? What's that date? Let's go. I love these dates. I, Denisha, you got a good group. Boss lady, you got a good group. I love these dates. These dates are coming in. Let's go. I love it. <laughs> I love it. This is what I'm talking about. Stay committed. And by the way, this is recorded. So we, we get these dates, right, Denisha? <laughs> we got these dates. All right. Great. Financial assistance program. Now, I just want to be honest with you. You're going to have friends, family, and families that's going to say, ah, I don't like Boston. Boston to it. Boston don't do nothing for me. Boston's not for, for the people. And I'm going to tell you, you need to run quick, like just run fast away from, from that negative energy because they don't understand how many programs, how many programs in the state of Massachusetts how many programs in the city of Boston that will put you in a home like this, right? Because they didn't write down their goals. They didn't go and speak to Denisha. They didn't talk to the boss lady. They didn't talk to Michelle. They just saying, oh, I'm sitting here. I can't get nowhere. But they, you have to ask for help. If, 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 if I would say one, th one thing that changed my life is asking for help, being vulnerable, saying, hey, I want you to have a part of whatever I'm doing. I need help. I need assistance. I can't, I'm not perfect. 
you we all we all need help and the city of boston have so many programs to to take you to the next level all right all right so first home needs to be your biggest home to make you the most money all right i'm I'm about to say it. Some some people are gonna get mad right now. Some people is going to get mad. If you could afford a three family or even a four family, but you decided to buy a single family, that's probably the biggest mistake you ever done. That's all I'm saying. The biggest mistake. Now, if you could only afford a condo, a single family. Anything is better than renting as long as the numbers work. So this means if you bought a two bedroom condo and you're paying 2,800, eh, that don't make sense. I'll, I'll just go rent. And it kind of makes sense. I'll just save my money and go get the, the two family, right? If you can't afford it, this is, if you can't afford it, just hear me out if you can't afford it. If you say, hey, I don't like people so I'm going to get a single family, but I could afford a four family. You done made a mistake. You say you don't like people, but if you buy a four family, you could, you could, you could have enough F you money for your, for, for your boss, right? You could, you could change your career. You could start working for you faster. So you don't see the people at work, right? If you say you don't like people, right? So I would say this. In the book I'm reading, in the book I'm writing, Mortgage Before Marriage, I'm just trying that out. I would say this. My, my tenants paid for my wedding, but they wasn't invited. Because of the, the big home, because of the, 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 more, the rent I was getting at the big home. Imagine if I went straight to single family. I couldn't, I couldn't tell Bank of America or Citizens Bank, I'm not coming to work. I couldn't do that at 23. I couldn't jump into real estate and say, you know what, rent tenants, I need you to have my back. I couldn't do that. So we 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 chased comfort instead of instead of chasing being financially comfortable, we chasing just physical comfort. That's it. I just want to be physical comfort. I just want to be by myself. You know, it doesn't, it, we, we, that, that first home got to be the biggest home and make you the most money. Let's go. I, I'm, I'm loving it. Look, so before this is, this is, this is, I seen this picture, right? I'm going to talk about this picture real quick. You know why I like this picture? Because I can't lie. I would wear that outfit. I can't lie. I would wear that outfit with no socks, Right. My daughter, I don't, I'm okay with that. You could wear that, Callie, right? I'm, I'm a little mad. Kind of looks like your cousin. He kind of looks like your cousin. You, you, yo, I'm going bald. So I'm like, my man going bald too. I'm like, yo, I, I think Denise is like joking with me. When I seen him, like she, she kind of said, someone that looked like Alex E. Edwards. And I was like, oh, found it, right? So that's one. Love the picture, hands down. But mortgage before marriage. Again, I might get some sevens might get some zeros but i think it's extremely important i think it's extremely important to love yourself first to take care of your finances first to rock with your mortgage first before you rock with anybody else my opinion my opinion if 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 i'm not financially secure why i'm going to jump into a relationship i a marriage and maybe mess joanna up right that doesn't make sense. I can't, I can't add nothing. If Joanna's moving forward financially, what can I do? I'm just holding her back. I can't jump on along with her. My credit's bad. I can't put in no money. I don't got no money. I don't make another, I don't make enough income. I can't do nothing. Right? Let's let's let me ask y'all a question. I want to ask everyone a question. Which one will come first? A million dollars or falling in love? Would you win a million dollars or would you fall in love first? Most likely in life. If you would, if you think you would win a million dollars before falling in love, I want a zero. I want zero in a chat. If you think you will fall in love before a million dollars, you will fall in love before you win a million dollars, I need a seven.
Okay. I see like two zeros. Look, whatever you, if you want a million dollars already, you need to show me how you did it. This is amazing. If you want a million dollars already, or you think no one's going to love you before you win a million dollars, we could talk off, we could talk offline so we, I can make sure we good. All right. But check this. If you know in your mind that you could find love, like love will come, why not focus on a million dollars? Why not? Why not focus on the million dollars? Right? I, I don't know about you, but I want my wife to want me. I don't want my wife to need me. Right? I don't know about you. I want people to want me, not need me. If everyone need me, that means they can't do nothing for me. I can only do for them. Right? And if I need them, that means, look, I can't do nothing for them because I need them. So I want everyone around me, boss lady, Michelle, Denise, I want them to want to work with me, not need to work with me. I want my wife to want me, not need me. So if you both on the same level, we talk about homes, 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 counting roofs. We are having a blast. See, people get divorced. The, the, the second most reason why finances we talk finances so why not take care of your finance before you jump in a relationship so your love could be better right you it's come on let's be serious making love with your bills paid is much better than making love broke we all know i think it, it's mentally mentally it's kind of there like I, I don't have nothing to worry about i could relax with my woman i could take her out i don't, I don't have to worry about man damn I got to get gas, but I don't got no money. I can't take it nowhere. Man, root Chris is way too expensive. I can't take it there. You, we, we, we don't want to think about that. So we have to do the right things so we could be in position. That makes sense? All right. All right. It's a family affair. Buy together. I love this. Look, when I bought my home, I, um, I, I was so excited. I, 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 um, I, I moved out right away. Like my mom, she, I felt like she went to work and when she came home, I was gone, right? I was, I was just excited to leave to be on my own. Then I started getting lonely. I'm like, man, no one's ever at my house. Everyone's working. And now I can't talk about mortgages with my friends. They don't know nothing about it or my family. It's like, ah. Eh. Damn, what do I do? So I was like, oh, I'm going back home. So I rented out, I rented out my, my floors. I went right back home. Mama, I'm back, right? And so now, you know, mama, mama's not charging Alex a, a lot of money, right? So, but now I had an opportunity to, to build, to build, to build, to build, to build, to build, right? And now, as I get older, friends are buying homes. Everyone's buying homes now. We talking, we talking, and everyone's now, it's now it's, it's cool to buy a home, right? We ain't talking about Jordans anymore. We ain't talking about women no more. Like, yo, what rate did you get? You got that rate. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. I need to refinance, right? And that's the cool conversations that we need to have, right? See, what I did wrong, I'll tell you what I did wrong. Yes, Alex, yeah, it was go wrong sometimes, a lot of times. Um, but what I did wrong is when I first started, I didn't bring my family with me right away. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I should have been way more vocal. I should have brought them to meetings with me. I should have did more, right? But I'm, I'm catching up now. I'm doing that now, right? So it could turn into a family affair. If you, we all own homes, imagine I'm going to, to, to Britt. Britt, let me hold 20. Denisha, let me hold 20. And we're going back and forth. That's buying power. That's buying power. I'm going to tell you another secret about real estate. This is why real estate is amazing. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I bought my home at, the first floor had one bedroom, one bath. Um, the top floor had um, five bedrooms, one bath. Today, the top floor has five bedrooms, one bath. The, the first floor has uh, four bedrooms and three baths, right? So I'm, I'm collecting more rent, making way more money. Guess what? My mortgage is the same. 
the more money I make, the mortgage stays the same. You understand that? The more money I make, the, the my, my mortgage company will say, hey, Alex, uh, your rent is extremely high. Um, you make your real good money. Uh, you think we can renegotiate? No, that's not happening. That's not happening, right? So I keep asking myself why more people aren't buying. Why, right? You get a raise. Now you have a friend that said, "No, I don't want to raise because because uh, Metro Housing is going to raise my raise my portion of the rent." We have that friend that says that, right? But in, in, if you're the landlord, you can make all the money you want. The mortgage company is not calling you. This real estate game is, is the game you need to be in. So you could you don't have to make it a career, right? You don't have to make it a career, but make it a stepping stone saying, hey, I'm getting real estate so I can. See that? I'm getting real estate so I could. I'm getting real estate because I want to be. some. So I'm not telling you, don't jump into real estate and that's all you do. You jump into real estate so you could be an actor if you wanted to, be a lawyer, be create your own business. That's why you jump into real estate so you could have the freedom, right? All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Playing craps now. All right, so FHA shuffle. So I know a lot of people saying, oh, I hate FHA. And, and when I yell FHA on, on my um on my on my lives, I know a lot, why would you tell people? To use FHA, I don't understand you, Alex. You've been in the game for so long. I expect better from you. I'm like, hey, right. Alex, I think I know where you're about to go. I'm sorry. But I did want to throw in just before you did a question that was asked in the chat. And for all of you out there that have questions, please make sure to put them into the chat so we can address them. So a question that popped up, which I think you're about to go in this direction, was what programs offer the 3 to 3.5% 3 down payment in Massachusetts? Okay. Yep. So obviously FHA is one. Thank you, Bert. All right. FHA is one, right? But we all hear about this PMI, private mortgage insurance, where everyone is such an, oh, my, don't do it. You have to pay PMI. So the thing about FHA and other programs, right? You could get like the, let's go to the, 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 the one, let's go with the one, right? Better rate, no PMI. You have to live there. You have to live there. I buy FHA. I'm excited. I do have PMI. I'm putting down my 3.5. In six months, I'm going to refinance. In another year, I could move because I'm not locked up to that program. So I'm going to move, right? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to put 3.5 down again. Mm-hmm. Six months. I'm going to refinance. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to move. I'm going to put 3.5 down again. In six months, guess what I'm going to do? Then I'm going to meet this. Then I'm going to meet Joanna, you know, in the past and say, sweetheart, you, oh, you want to get married? <laughs> Let me see your closing papers. You close? All right, do the same thing I, I did, and we good. That's the FHA. You're not putting 20% down. You're not putting 10% down. You're constantly putting 3.5 down. A lot of people think once you buy an FHA loan, you can, once you use an FHA loan, you could never use it again. And that's false. You can refine. This is the easiest way. So you don't have to put down 20%. This is the easiest way, right? So you just, we're going to refinance out of FHA, go into a conventional. Now conventional, you, you don't have to live there. We're going to refinance, go on the conventional and move on. That's the plan. I lived in my basement for years. For years. Just, well, I'm, I'm chilling. I don't need it. I don't have no kids. I don't, I don't have a wife. I don't have a girlfriend. I'm doing what I have to do. Take care of Alex first, right? So that's the FHA shuffle. A lot of people, again, believe that you could use FHA one time. Right. So that's why I keep telling people, if you are in the business where you want to constantly buy homes, FHA is not a bad program. It isn't a bad program. Right now, if you Alex, if I see, yep. from social media, just so we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram live, but from Instagram, they asked if you could repeat the FHA shuffle. FHA, okay. All right. Great. All right. So 
this is what we're going to do. I'm going to buy a home, right? I'm going to buy a home, FHA, 3.5 down. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to get excited. I'm going to buy a three-family first or even a two-family. I'm not going to go with a single, but I want to buy a three-family first, right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to live there for about a year, but in six months, I'm going to refinance, get out of, stop paying PMI as long as long as I have equity. We got to keep 25% in the house, right? As long as I buy great, I didn't over leverage myself, meaning I bought a home at 900 grand, but it's, it's, it's worth seven. I'm not, I'm not talking about that, all right? So I'm going to refinance. Once I refinance in a year, you know what? I'm going to go home shopping again. I'm going to move because you can move out of a conventional loan and then I'm going to buy another FHA home. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do. So if you, if you have children, you know, please teach them this ASAP. You have young, young teenagers, you have um, young adults in your home. Parents, let them stay in your home. As long as they buying homes, why, why, why push them out? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. All right. NACA. See, Denisha is hitting right back and back. It's a lot. NACA, they'd be like, Alex, why are you talking about NACA? I'll, I'll be ducking. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. See, NACA, see, it's always pros and cons to everything. It, it, like, every mortgage is not, it's not for everyone, right? Like, it's just, let's be honest. See, and this is the sad thing about real estate. And this is why I love, again, um, uh, organizations like this um, that, that Michelle, Britt, and uh, Denisha run, because look, Bank of America, you walk into Bank of America right now, I promise you, Bank of America is not going to tell you, uh, yeah, I know you want a mortgage, but we don't have the best rates. I, I promise you that's not going to happen. I, pro I promise you, you walk into Citizen Bank today and Citizen Bank tells you, you know what, we don't, I know you don't qualify for the one, but we, you qualify for FHA and we don't have the best rates, so you should go somewhere else. I promise, this is not going to happen, people. This is not going to happen. That's why organizations like this is like, all right, what's, okay, tell me about your income. Tell me about your credit. I'm going to push you in the right direction. That's why we start the 90 day challenge to push you in the right direction, right? So NACA, this is why I love NACA. Now I'm going to say the bad about NACA first. NACA has a high turnover. I think they overwork their employees. Um, I, I, I think I, I just think it, they could be a lot better, but it's not, it's not organized. They don't have like a Denisha in the mix to really organize everything and get everything like running in the right direction. Um, they take forever. Uh, they tedious. Um, and it's like, you have to meet with them once a month to even kind of get this pre approval. It's just, it's just a long process, right? Um, when you, when you finally get the pre-approval, they, if you want to put a, a, a offer in a home, you have to get your insurance quote, right. Um, and before you put that offer in, so it kind of now it takes you a day, a day or two to actually put an offer in. That's why I don't like NACA. That's, that's the, the, the don'ts, right. The cons, but, <clears throat> but NACA, I could buy a million dollar home with NACA right? And buy my rate down to, I think it's right now is 0 0.83. It might even be lower, right? With NACA, you do have to stay in the house, right? I could buy a four family home and buy my rate down to 0 0.083. No other program. No, 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 no. You're not getting that from nobody else. Citizen Bank won't tell you that. Bank of America won't tell you that right? They won't tell you that. Wells Fargo won't tell you that. And they support NACA, right? NACA, they don't care about your credit score. They care about your credit report. Meaning I have a 500, but I don't have anything on my credit report. So therefore you don't have to clean up and, and, and climb up. You could get in the house right away. They have no down payment, no closing costs. So if you can make it through the fire, ooh, you're a homeowner making money, right? 
I went, um, Regis Gonzalez, he bought, he's in your group. He bought from that. I went to his house the other day. He bought a home. It was 331. I'm, if I'm lying, I'm flying. I went to his house the other day. His home is now 333. Knock alone. They give you construction. You could buy anything you want. FHA, you can't buy anything you want. If you're using regular FHA um, 203, yes. Right? My man, my man is, he, he's now turned his home to 333. NACA, right? It was, again, it was hard. It was long. His rate, amazing. But remember, he, again, I'm going to say this again. He bought it at 331 right? The homeowner sold it to him at 331, that value. He's now at 333, the value sky high because of the market and what he did to the bedrooms. His mortgage is the same. His mortgage is the same. All right, let's go. And Denise, if I'm moving too slow, just, just you could just do this. All right. All right. Second home. Wait, wait, right? wait, Alex. Okay. Are you able to take a question? I mean, I, I, go ahead, Britt. Okay, so before we move on to the second home and vacation home, um, there's actually an interesting question that came in from, I'm gonna say the person's name, I apologize if I pronounce it incorrectly, Pashan Nick. And Pashan asked um, how to start from a condo that was modified in 20, in 2007 and payments are $600. So Pashan, I'm not sure if you want to try to go into the chat, um, just to bubble up to the top so that we can address your question specifically. But again, they asked how to start from a condo mm -hmm. that was modified in 2007 and payments are only $600. Okay. So one thing for sure, we have to understand how you bought the condo. Are you still FHA? Did you buy it with a NACA? Did you buy it with the one? Kind of just, well, the one was not around in that, in, is that 2007? Correct. Yeah. But we just want to understand how you bought it. So you're a conventional. It's, it's easy, right? The tough things about, the tough thing about condos, they might have a, uh, the bylaws might tell you, you can't rent it. That's just the downside, right? That's a downside. So if you could rent that particular condo, all I'm doing is that, that if it's $600, I don't know how much you make, but that's all about savings at that point. Get a roommate or something, but that's all about savings at that point. And now I'm going to put down 3%, 3.5 and move on, right? Don't let any situation be an anchor. I promise you, you tell me any situation, I'm a problem solver. I will pull up that anchor for you and say, look, this is how we're moving forward. Don't even worry about it. Because believe it or not, you don't know what someone's going through until you know what someone's going through, right? So with that condo, bro, let's come up with a plan. You can get with Denisha, you can get with uh, uh, Britt and Michelle, come up with a plan, we put it together and we'll show you how to move forward. That's a bet. If you feel me, drop that seven. Okay, so he did respond or she, I'm sorry. Um, they did respond saying, I did a first time buyers, home buyers class and they can rent it. Perfect. That's well, like I said, um, contact us. We'll, 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 we'll definitely uh, create a map for you, but that's, that's phenomenal. Hopefully you refinanced already out of the FHA. If not, we now have to just make sure that your rate makes sense to refinance out of the FHA. If that rate makes sense, <laughs> we're going with a three you have to promise me you're going with a three family or something though before we move forward but I, that's my suggestion and the rate is 4.5 okay so oh, your I rate's 4.5 oh yeah denisha we could definitely do something with that Britt. we could 4.5 absolutely you should have refined i should i should look i'm blaming on them i should have been on this every month i'm just saying i'm joking <laughs> but 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 honestly Rates was just two percent. That was your that was your that was your door. But don't worry about it. Rates is about three three point two right now, so you still could save a lot of money. You could drop PMI. You could take money out if you wanted to, and kind of just pay the same if you wanted to. 
So we still, we definitely can help you, but you have to move fast because you just missed two point, you just missed 2%. You just missed 2%. That's, that's more than half. So if you was paying six and you refund, you might be paying three, 250. I have one more question for you before we go on to second home and vacation homes. So this person asked, um, and this might be more of a Michelle question, just on the specifics, but if you want to give your perspective on this, this person asked, is it, uh, is it a good idea to max out their 401k to purchase property? Good question. Yes. I'm the same. Sorry. As long as you look, I won't max out my 401k to go buy a single family or a condo. I'm not doing that. If I'm buying a multi-family, right? Right. First of all, you're not paying tax because you're buying a home. That's a no-brainer, right? You're using your company money and your money together to buy you a home. No-brainer, right? So first, I am buying a multi-family, and that multi. Say, for instance, I take out, I took out, I took out twenty thousand dollars, and that multi-family is at least bringing me two thousand dollars profit a month. That means in ten months, I paid myself back. Uh, I'm going to say absolutely. I'm extremely confident with that decision with no problem. As long as you're looking at the numbers, I'm okay. If you did uh, profit $1,000 a month, okay, that's going to take you 20 months. But would you make more money with your 401k staying in, in, um, staying in or out? Think about that, out. Right, because eventually you're gonna buy another house because of that one four four on one k uh, withdrawal. You see me? All right. So second strategy home strategy is key, guys. So I'm gonna let you go ahead. All right. So I lo I love the sevens. I'm I'm like a hundred plus out here. I'm telling you, seven sevens. Let's go. So all right, check this. Um, second home. Now we again we think about. I don't know where we got to. Oh yeah, we, I know where we got twenty percent from. All right, so your second home. We talked about your second home and how to get your second home, right? Um, but your vacation home. This is so Airbnb made getting a vacation home is extremely easy. I can't lie, right? You could now buy a vacation home in New Hampshire. You know, say you find it for two hundred, three hundred. That's ten percent, right? The only time you should be buying a, a vacation home. If you did, like the only time you should go on vacation if you worked hard, right? But if you're talking about, look, I'm not making no money for my home. I'm not making, I'm, you don't need to go on vacation. Just telling you the truth. You don't need, just don't even worry about it. Leave the vacation to somebody else. But if you did everything I just told you to do, if you're doing everything that, um, that 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 Michelle um, Britt and Denisha tells you do every single month. Hey, you deserve a vacation home because you having money coming from everywhere, right? So now you're saying, look, I want to move forward and get this vacation home, right? The good thing about the vacation home, you can Airbnb, you can Airbnb that and make money on your vacation home and just vacation when you want to. It's called a vacation home because you're not gonna be there all the time. Now you're making money on your vacation home. On your vacation, imagine, look, Florida is cheaper than Boston. Florida is cheaper than, Bo if you could afford, see the thing about Boston, and I think you, we all need to understand, watch this. I'm going to get a lot of sevens, watch this. If you can't afford Boston, guess what? You can afford almost the entire world. America, I would say. America. Boston is high. <laughs> you look, yo. Our rent, our, li our lifestyle is hot. We're normal because we're here. But when I when I tell my, when I'm talking to my cousin from Georgia, I'm like, yeah, three, a three beds, almost three, three thousand. What? What? So if you're paying three thousand dollars in Boston, imagine if you go to Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, you living like a king and a queen, right? So now it's like we took the hardest test first, right? We took the hardest test first, right? So now if we, we took the hardest test, that means Boston, right? One of the hardest, right? New York, California, they, they up there as well. But if we could survive Boston and, and the market rents, I'm telling you that 
you could get a vacation home in another state and be okay. Airbnb, renting it out, renting it out, renting it out, right? We went down, we went down to Martha's Vineyard last year as a family because of one of our family members, guess they own two homes down there. They was booked all, we had to get like one of those weird dates. Like, yo, you, you could come here on a Monday. <laughs> you know, you could come in on a Monday. You got to leave Wednesday. It was just a weird dates. They was constantly booked out. But they put 10% and made that 10% in a year, less than a year. Vacation homes need 10%. All right, so this is why we're here, right? So we, we're not stupid. We see what's going on in the world. Um, and to the fellas, it's, it's, I'm talking to the fellas right now. It's getting harder to make it home. It's getting hard to make it home, to leave your family and say, I'll be back. You don't know if you're going to be back. It's getting harder to do that, right? Look. We definitely, not only the fellas now, all of us need to come together. It's easier to buy big commercial billion, buildings than buying a single family. Yeah, wait, because the bank's looking at you like, wait, you're buying a single family. I'm only dependent on your income. So that means I'm only either dependent on your boss or your business for you to pay. If you buy a, a, a unit, 42 units, they're like, this person gonna pay. I mean, they got 42 units. It's already rented out. They're going to pay. They got good credit. They got a down payment. Just give it to them. They're going to pay. See that? See that? That's, it's easier to get 42 units than a single family. Right? So, but now you say, well, I don't have the money. Come together. Come together. My, I got friends that are doing the same thing I'm doing. I have, I have, Relative to doing the same thing I'm doing. Some of us didn't come together yet. I'm calling me a fool and I'm calling that person a fool too. Because we could be much bigger together. If, you, if everyone comes to, imagine this. Everyone here dropped in 10,000. Lawyers was involved. Everyone, everyone's involved to make sure your investment is safe. Let's be serious. What are you buying? something big you're not buying nothing small you're buying something that's going to send your kids to start a business right you're going to buy something big imagine this now you're in boston with only ten thousand dollars talking about you about to go buy a house you're a joke it's not gonna happen unless you get programs and you get grants and stuff like that right but if you come together you're buying a block no one could stop you that's the idea just come together and again i have to lead by example Right, Denisha has to lead by example. Brett has, we have to lead by example. We have to do something so big that it inspire, it inspires all of you to come together and make some money. Right, I'm gonna put, we're gonna put that on our shoulders. Once we do it, now we say, all right, this is how you do it. Right, so again, sorry, go ahead. I'll just add in there. So you have your investment groups that you do with, um, there are different investment groups out there. Um, you can invest with your friends and your family. There are also real estate investment trusts or REITs. Yeah. Um, so if you don't want, you don't have people that you trust, uh, you can go even in Robinhood um, yeah. or on the stock market, they have investment trusts. So pretty much you're going to be part owner of, and Something. it's like a very small percentage, right? Of shares. Yeah of um, let's say they own a thousand units in the US, then you are you have shares in that. So they, they pay you dividends on that every month or every quarter because you loan them money or you invested in that trust. Yes, so yes, you I have people that you know, but if you don't wanna do that, you can look for REITs um, and invest in those as well. So you get a return. Yeah, and, and, and funny thing is uh, next month I'm, I'm speaking to the, the uh, I think the podcast is called Egg Investments, Inve Egg Investors. And it's two women that put together a trust. And um, I, I don't know what state they're in. I'm going to be talking to them soon. And 
they just managing money, people's money around the world just to buy real estate. So that's what Denisha is talking about, right? If you don't have friends, investment groups or investment trusts, but it's, you could get into real estate like this, like this, all right? Lottery homes, Denisha's favorite. Lottery homes. Look, I can't lie to you. I want to be honest. It's loopholes in lottery homes. <laughs> I want, it's crazy how you could buy a... I remember when um, Denisha was selling this home. It was on uh, Glenway. And at the time, it was, it was, a, it was a, a multi-family, two-family... And it was like, well, this is a lottery home and you can't make, you can't get no more than 2,100 for this two bedroom. I'm like, 2,100? That's a good deal still, no matter what. 2,100, I promise you, I'll never raise my rent more than 2,100 because my mortgage is almost nothing. My That's almost paying my mortgage. Why would I raise my rent? Don't need to, right? The good thing about lottery homes, you get into a lottery home and you win a million dollars. You win a million dollars the next day, you they can't kick you out. So, or your income goes up dramatically. Again, this is not Metro housing. This is not um, Boston housing. Your income goes up right away. Your mortgage don't change. They can't kick you out, right? You marry someone, remember? Because I, I told you, I gave you relationship financial advice earlier. So you marry someone that's on your level, making good money, he or she owns a lot of real estate and they move in with you in your lottery home. <laughs> they can't kick you out. You living for free. You have someone paying you 2,100. Your mortgage is probably 2,000 and they can't kick you out. To me, it's a no brainer. To me, it's a no brainer. Go ahead, Britt. I just wanted to share a little bit of my ownership with people. Yep. Um, we actually live in an affordable unit, one of the previous lottery homes. So we're not the first winner of the property. However, this was a relist. So people underestimate those lottery homes that people are selling that you can also buy into. Yep. And we ain't going to talk about your money, but she make a little extra. I'm just saying, and no one could kick her out. Lottery, so we have just look, sometimes just meet success where you're at. Sometimes just meet wealth where you're at. Just, just, just meet halfway. Just like, you know what? Today, wealth, I'm going to meet you halfway. I'm going to buy this lottery home. I'm going to make a lot of money from it after I purchase it. I'm going to get a raise. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to rent each room out. Whatever you're going to do. Meet wealth halfway, but don't ever say, I'm just not ready yet. That's bull crap. That's bull crap. I'm just not ready yet. That's bull crap. Meet wealth halfway. You deserve it. You deserve it. All right. So mass save, look, mass save. You need to jump in mass save ASAP. If you own a home, just, just call them. Get If, if they can't help you, at least you're going to get free bulbs. You're going to get, uh, um, you're going to get a lot of free stuff. Um, but the good thing about mass save, if you need furnaces, if, if you need, um, if you need windows and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's a great program. Some 0% interest It's a no brainer. Again, another thing at, um, added, uh, and brought to you by Massachusetts, right? Um, the home Depot pro account, look, if you're doing any renovations, please, before you do anything, please sign up to the Home Depot Pro account, right? And allow and make sure, make sure you pay for the material, right? If you pay for the material and you use your um, your Pro account, I know, I'm sorry, if contractors is on, contractors right now, I'm like, oh, hey, bro, I ain't giving you a seven for this one. You taking money out of my pocket. I get it. I apologize. But if you, as the homeowner, actually go um, buy the material, so the pro account will give you money back. So this is what I want you to do. Next time you have a project, 
you're doing a room over, whatever, you hiring a, um, a, 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 uh, a contractor, I want them to put a list together for you, right? And I want you to either say, hey, when you get to Home Depot, I want Home Depot to call me because I have a pro account. Once Home Depot call you, I want you to make sure and say this, hey, did you put my material in the bid room? Did you put my material into the bid room? Now, that person will, should say yes. When that person say yes, how much did I save? Anything over 1500 you should be saving something, S especially if you're buying um, lumber or anything at a Home Depot product, right? Now, guess what? If you don't do this, guess what your contract is doing? Well, yeah, the material is going to be $10,000. All right, I'll give you $10,000 to start to, uh, to, uh, to give you, right? So they give you 10000 you give them $10,000, they go to Home Depot, um, they go in the bid room, and they actually get $3,000 back. That's the game. That's the game. So I need you. I don't care if you if you're not doing any projects. Be prepared. Be per this go to Home Depot tomorrow. Matter of fact, Home Depot closes like around nine. It's seven ten. Hey, seven ten July tenth, my birthday. So um, go to Home Depot nine. Yep, go to Home Depot now to say y'all want to sign a pro account. And I believe you could do it on. Um, I, I believe you could do it on online as well. Just go sign up for a pro account, right? It makes sense. It makes sense. Alex, you were requested to repeat what you might have said in reference to lottery homes. Okay, I'm so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait to the end. We're gonna we almost there, and we're gonna I'll answer all questions towards the end. So Britt, just don't let me forget. All right, all right, great. Next, look honestly, if you're buying material, check this. If you buy material, and you have the money in your pocket. Just swipe that credit card, especially if it's a JetBlue. Just swipe that credit card, get that JetBlue points, pay it right away, and go on a trip once you once your project over. You made money on Home Depot. The contractor's mad at you because they didn't rip you off. And plus, you got point JetBlue points. Just look, just pay that off and, and go take a vacation. We got, we got to think smarter. We have to think smarter. We're talking about money. We have to understand how money works, right? And you, we have to work money. We, we no longer can't accept people giving us something. We are taking it. We are taking it. We are getting smarter and we taking it, right? Any questions? Excuse me. All right, I have to turn on the light. Any questions? So uh, repeat the lottery. All right, so lottery. Um, so the lottery home, um, you fill out an application and it's, it's just self-explanatory. It's, it's a lottery, right? They pick your name and it, it goes by your income. It goes by, you, you have to qualify for this particular, particular home. So you buy this home today, right? Um, you're fresh out of college or this is your first home. You're not making a lot of money, whatever. You buy this home today, buy a multi, single, whatever. With lotteries, you qualify when you purchase. You don't, you don't have to keep qualifying right? Like Section 8 or Boston Housing. You qualify when you purchase. So if you win a million dollars, if you get married, if you make, um, if, if your income go up, you are still paying the same exact thing. That's the loophole in the lottery. It's a good loophole because it makes sense. They can't kick you and push you out because you, you're doing better for yourself. So that is the actual, like, if you don't have nothing else and say, look, I'm going to rock with this lottery. If you, if you have to, so if I had to buy a single family lottery right now, what I would do is, all right, I'm going to look for, I'm going to look, I'm, I'm, if I have kids, whatever, what's going on? I have to, I have to get this lottery. If it's just me, all right, I have this lottery home. I know for a fact that one, whoever I get married to got to be on point because they about to walk into zero. Like they, they paying almost nothing. Right. And with their income, we're not going to get married right away. So with their income, right, we both want to save up for a down payment so that person could buy a buy a home while they live in this lottery home and pay almost nothing. So now we're just stacking. I might get a raise or I might start a side hustle, right? A, not even a side hustle, a side business. The lottery, like you will not get pushed out or kicked out. So it makes sense. It makes sense. And now you're paying less, right? It's, see, a lot of people say, I don't like the lottery homes because 
look, the 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 uh the equity don't grow as fast as a regular home. But why are you playing the long? Why are you playing the long game and thinking about the long game when you could still buy homes? You still could buy homes. So why are you not thinking about the? This is a come up. This is just a stepping stone. You need to think that way. Don't don't let no one mess up your your mindset where oh yeah this is the negative thing. No, okay, but. If I stay in there, if I get a raise, if I win a million dollars, if I marry someone, if I get with someone that's making money, we could build wealth right away. We could be, and we could stay in the lottery home. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, Of course, of course. It's literally all about strategy, guys. So what Alex is talking about is the different ways you can do it. So I've worked with quite a few people who have purchased and sold lottery homes, and they've made hundreds of thousands of dollars with their lottery home. Um, with the affordable units. It's all in how you look at it. I think people are like, well, I don't want, you know, to lose appreciation. And what that means is as your neighborhood value goes up. So we'll use Roxbury. Roxbury three families was like $200,000 10 years ago, right? You could spit on it. Nobody wanted it. They didn't want it. Now it's a million dollars. If you had an affordable in Roxbury that you bought 10 years ago, you wouldn't get a million dollars today. You might get like 500,000 or 400,000 for it, right? Yes, you're losing money because you're not making the million, but you're still getting like three or $400,000. So it's better than nothing because had you not purchased that, you would get $0 because you'd still be renting. You'd be paying someone. So I try to tell people, it's like, it's all in how you look at it. You will get some appreciations. You'll get some money, not all the money, but that's because you couldn't afford to buy at full market price. If you can afford to buy full market, buy full market. If you can't, then you get in where you fit in, you get the affordable, and then you save your money over time because your mortgage is probably always going to be cheaper than rent. Yep. So let's say your, your mortgage was $1,500 for a three bedroom. We all know that a three bedroom is like $2,800 to $3,000 now. So you're saving $1,500 every month. Save that $1,500 and invest it. That's how you kind of leverage the affordable units so that you're still building wealth and you still can get ahead and not look at it like I'm losing all this money that you don't even have yet because you haven't purchased. So it's kind of trying to be strategic in how you're thinking and how you want to get to your, your road to success, so to speak. And, can, and, and uh, Denisha, can you talk about some of the programs that you could use to buy these, um, these lottery homes? Yep. So you have the, the one mortgage, you have the one plus Boston, which is specific to Boston, where they give you or not give, um, but you have up to $50,000 to put towards the purchase of a home in Boston. And what they do is some of that goes towards your down payment and your closing cost. And some of that goes towards buying down the interest rate. So we had a young lady last year purchased a two family in Boston, and her interest rate was 1.375. Phenomenal. I already told her you're never refinancing, like, because that rate's never coming back. Like, you're sticking with that. Forever. How old is she? 23. Ooh. 23. Yes. So. And, it, and all she did was take Denisha's advice. That's all, all she said, Denisha, what do I do? Tell me. And Denisha said, this is what you do. That's all she did. Am I lying, Denisha? Nope. Tell the truth. We had a plan. So it's like sitting down and figure out what the plan is for you. And she, she worked it and she stayed on course. So she was able to, to buy where her interest rate, it's one, 1.375. How much? It's almost like the price she paid for the house is how much she's going to spend on the house. It's, it's not going to, she's not going to get too much interest charged onto that, which is phenomenal. Um, but it's really figuring out how you can make money off of, you know, wherever you buy. Um, you know, I have someone else who they wanted to live in Boston. We figured out they couldn't live in Boston. They bought in Brockton three, four years ago. Now they have a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. They could sell their house and move back to Boston because they have a hundred thousand dollars. Wait, 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 Denisha, Denisha, hold on. You, you on the hot seat? You on the hot seat? I'm interviewing sorry, you. Sorry, 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 you on the, sorry. You, you, I'm on. I'm going to interview you. You, you got to come back a little because you I'm left sorry. out. You left out a lot from the 23 year old. Okay, right. sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, you okay. break down because look, this was this was amazing, and this is why um, you and I'm I'm, I'm never going to say um, it's we we're 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 the only uh, agents out here that know everything. No, I'm not saying that. Um, but Denisha, mm-hmm. can we can you tell how you broke down the deal 
where they got money, right? Money to do construction. Ooh at 1.7. Come, let's go. We can't, you got we can't say that on here, Alex. No, 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 no. You <laughs> all right, all right, cool. All Point I gotta say, all Point I gotta say. You guys yeah. have to make sure you connect with Denisha so that you can create a strategic plan for mm. success. Yes. Some well, things we can't say. Yes, online. you're right, you're right, right. Well, <laughs> look, all I know is I came in, um, she, Denisha asked me to do something. I showed my support, went through, did my, my, my what I had to do for, for that particular client. And we all won. We all one and now she's 23 so imagine imagine where she's going to be in seven years when she turns 30 or this imagine when she meets someone you think she's going to accept someone less or more or, or on the same page right we we is this this, this mindset right here as long as you just switch your mindset i promise you you're good it's nothing wrong with you there's nothing at all wrong with you. Just switch your mindset. Put write it. Put it down on paper. If you could, I did an exercise the last 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 uh, uh, week. If you could write to your old self and say all the mistakes um, you made, just write to yourself. Write it all down, and then write to your future self and say what I'm going to stop doing. If you could do that, mindset change, and you stick to it, mindset change. So there's a lot of questions in in the chat. I don't know if we're going to get to them. But. Uh, yeah. And Britt, do you want to read them out? Because I don't even, I'm trying to go back. Okay. So um, one of the questions that was asked, you had spoken about Regis when he was purchasing his home, which I did actually see Regis even pop on here tonight. Thank you for joining. Um, but you had mentioned that his home was a 331 and now it's a 333. So they were asking, what does that mean? Oh, sorry. All right. So it was a three. So three bedrooms on the first floor, three bedrooms on the second floor. Now it's and it was a one bedroom on the third floor, but now it's a three on the third floor. So he 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 utilized the NACA program, right? <laughs> he said, "All right, I'm gonna use NACA. I'm gonna buy any home, chip paint, broken windows, no furnaces. I'm gonna do what I want to do with the NACA program and take advantage of that." And what he did was like, "I'm gonna pull some permits. Gonna make sure it's good." Um, um, for for it's good for the city for the city, and then I'm gonna move forward. That's what he did, and and it's awesome. crazy, and it's crazy because um, oh oh my fault, I was wrong. He said it was two bedrooms on the first and second, and it was one on the on the third. That's even a better deal. I apologize. I'm sorry for disrespecting you, Regis. I apologize for your great look. My fault, Regis. Yes, it was so. It's now it's three, three, three. So he's making a lot more money. Guess what NACA cannot do? NACA cannot come back and say, you know what? Uh, I, you owe me some money. We need to renegotiate. Not going to happen. This is, this is smart. That, that was brilliant. And he, and he, and I don't mean to tell his business, but that's probably the last good three family deal in Dorchester, it was, it was high 700s. He has, he might be sitting almost half an acre in Dorchester. I mean, his, his man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Regis, how did you negotiate that? That's what I want to know. Regis is in chat. So if you guys have <laughs> questions you want to direct to Regis, um, feel free. I'm sure he's willing to take some one-on-one -on -one, uh, during the chat. Um, <laughs> he's commenting in the chats right now to Alex. I do have another question that kind of um, plays on this whole topic with purchasing and renovations. So another question that was asked was, if there's home repairs that need to be done, the bathroom or the kitchen, um, is it smart to take out a home loan for renovations. You're on mute, Alex. Oh, does he need help coming off mute? Thank you. All right, so um, sorry, you said, so is it smart to take out a, a construction loan to, to uh, renovate a bathroom? Bathroom and kitchen. All right, the only, so when you pull money out of your home, 
you have to make more money. You have to make, that's my number one rule. If you could pull money out and make more money, like Regis, he took money to make more money. If it's out of his bank account, NACA, wherever he got that money from, he's making a lot more money. Makes sense. If you're pulling out just to entertain, I don't know if that makes sense. I would rather just take that money and buy another house if you're doing it just to entertain and then allow my tenants to pay um, to pay for, for, for the renovations, right? Again, I would say this, anything is better than renting. So if, again, you buy a single family and that's your first step and you're gonna keep moving up, I'm, I'm behind you, like, let's go. Cause you took that first step. Everyone's not gonna be ready to buy a four family, a three family, even a two family. So I'm not, I'm not shading you at all. That's, that's not what I'm doing. I'm saying, look, if you can, you go big, but if you can't make sure you stop renting, that's it. Another question that was asked, um, and this kind of also is my home ownership situation. And when I purchased um, our lottery home, again, it was a resale. So it wasn't the first lottery because so that people understand for anyone who's just starting to understand what lottery homes are, any of our new home buyers on here, when you're looking at an affordable property that the city is building, there are certain requirements when purchasing. There are also certain requirements when selling. So we purchased a resale of a lottery home. Now, the question that they're asking, I wanted to mention mine because I wasn't willing to wait, okay? So the question that was asked is how long does it take to win a lottery home? Um, that depends. Uh, it's a lottery. <laughs> so can't give you an, an idea of that. Um, it depends on how many people are in the lottery for that particular home. And they're across the state. So the ones that we're talking about are specific to Boston, but there are lottery homes across Massachusetts. Um, specifically, like they try to build them or it's a requirement when you look at Newton and some of the other um, towns where they need to have a certain percent of affordable units because their home sale prices are so high that their teachers and their, their other um, city employees can't even afford to live there. So they have to build affordable homes. So there's lottery units all over the state. Um, but it depends on how many people apply for them and enter will determine kind of where you are. Boston lotteries, um, there's a couple hundred people in them. It depends on if people like the unit or not, if you get picked or not, because they rearrange the numbers. Um, I've seen in other towns where literally two people applied and there's four units for sale. So now yeah. they're out kind of begging people to buy these. Yeah. So if you're willing to move outside of the city, you have a lot more options and a lot more opportunities. I've seen um, lottery homes or affordable homes in Attleboro. I've seen them literally across the, the state if you're willing to kind of be flexible. Yep. Great. Um, and, and just um, so people are clear, a lottery home, you still have to pay for it. You still have to have uh, yeah. funds for down payment, down payment yeah. you still have to have um, either apply for assistance through the city or have those funds. So lottery is not free, but it is an opportunity to purchase a property yeah. that the city has built. Yeah, you, you're paying almost, you're paying half at least, right? Um, if you was buying the same exact home or less, right? Um, a lot. I seen a, a question come in real quick. Um, does the city of Boston offer any programs where they will help you um, renovate your home? Um, I didn't talk about this for so long. Is this is is home safe? Is that the program? Mm -hmm. I think home so. safe. We got 3D. Wait, hold on. My my uh, my wife's my wife's on this. I know she knows 3D. You have 3D for three families. Home safe is for singles and multis. Um, but if I drop, if if yeah, I I, I almost I'm, I'm so, and they have the senior program. Mm -hmm. There you go. And, and the then senior Let's program. Save Boston. And the lead safe. So those are programs that you could use. Um, and um, you could use from the city uh, and take advantage of. It. And I do speak to city inspectors. They they are telling me that in Dorchester surrounding areas, we are not using the ADU program at all. Um, so 
What's the ADU that? the ADU bill program is a program offered by again City of Boston. So again, I know a lot of people talk about Boston, but here comes another program of they offer us. Mm -hmm. You have another program they offer us. So now they're saying, hey. I want you to finish your basement. Hey, I want you to finish your attic and I want to give you some money to do this, but I'm going to make it a little easier for you. I need you to get a drawing. I need the basement to be about seven, um, seven feet high. Um, and, and, and you're going to pass just like that. You don't have to go through zoning. You don't have to ask your neighbor. We're going to just make this happen for you, right? As long as you live there and you're renting it out, right? So, and, and developing, right? Um, we developing right now, we developing three condos right now. Once we finish that particular development and we develop something huge, maybe if it's still in the works, but once we finish that development, we now can talk to you and walk you through a development. So if you know someone that have land, right? Or you have land on your, on, on your property. All right, now we're gonna have a discussion to put a plan together to get money for you to renovate, right? So, and, and renovate is easier than you think. As long as you get permits, you can refinance and get cash to renovate. That makes sense. As long as you have permits for that land, we can leverage the permits and get a and get a loan from the bank so we could drop a house on there. That makes sense. It, it, I'm telling you, those, those sevens. Let's go. Let's go. Um, Where it was. Um, Joanna, if you go, if you could type in the chat all the programs, the city programs. I, I know you did it already, uh, but someone just asked again. Um, Here's right. an interesting pro, uh, an interesting question, which I think is fair because there's a lot of um, programs out there that you do want to stay away from. There's a lot of uh, ads out there that you want to stay away from. So someone actually typed in the chat multiple yeah. times. Um, are there any companies, any loans, or any programs that we should stay away from? Yep. Um, Denisha. I'll let you go first. No, 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 no. Denisha, we was just having this conversation, right? Remember the, the program that will take some of your equity once you sell it? Mm -hmm. Please talk about that program. Uh, Me personally seen a client with this program, and she cried. She cried. Go ahead, Denisha, please. So it's called Landed. Uh, they actually, I think, just struck a deal with BPS, which is good and bad, I guess. We'll see. Uh, where they they give you twenty enough money for 20% down so that you can compete in the market. They'll give you the 20% down payment so that you can buy a house in Boston or wherever. But, and you don't have to make payments on it. So it's 20% and you don't have to pay them back anytime soon. But when you sell they want their 20% back and they want a piece of your equity. So they're gonna split your equity with you. So let's say your house, you bought it at 500,000, now it's worth a million dollars. Uh, they want their 20,000, their 20% back. And then they want that other um, $500,000, they wanna split that with you. So they're probably gonna take like, let's say $250,000 of that money. So it sounds fans. good for people in the beginning because it's like, yeah, I don't have 20% and now I can compete. I can, you know, outbid all these people in this competitive market. When you're ready to sell, you're going to be really upset because they're coming for their money. Mm -hmm. The sell is we, we, we win when you win, we lose when you lose. If the market crashes and you sell and you're not going to make money, then they don't, they don't come after you for that. You just have to pay back your 20%. That's it. Um, but if you win, if you strike it rich, they come in for some of your money. <laughs> so it depends. It's not necessarily that it's bad. You just have to understand what you're getting into so that you don't get your feelings hurt at the closing table. Correct. Correct. You got to understand what you're getting yourself. Now, if you understand, like, all right, I could use this as a play. Uh, yeah, go for it. Exactly. If that's a strategy, then it's all right. Because you know you're going to give up some equity. But that was how you got into real estate. You had to give up some equity yep. to get into it. Do, do what you got to do. do. What you got to do. Understand, because I've seen and, you know there's a program in Boston that does did the same thing, and I think they're getting sued right now. Yep, yep. Um, I seen that in the newspaper, and also, also with some of the the program like mass saves, like saving uh, mass housing, you have to pay that fifteen thousand dollars back. You know, there's, there's a second mortgage, but again, use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. So if you think you're not paying that back, uh, uh, read read through everything and make sure it's for you. Just like FHA, you do have a PMI, right? Just like NACA, it's tedious. 
right? And you do got to live there, right? So you just have to make sure you read through everything and you're going to be, you can be good. Make sure you understand it. Don't let them tell yeah. you. They yeah, explain exactly. it to you and then you go read it and make oh. sure you understand the fine print. Exactly, exactly. Um, a program out there that I know a lot of people are looking for. People have reached out to me for that. They rent to own. Spent... <laughs> Everyone. Yes. Really uh, it is not a thing up north. I'll say mm. wipe it out your head. It's something that's popular down south. Um, there's a company called Divi that's trying to kind of move across the country and do that now where they will buy the house for you and then you rent yep. it from them yep. until you can buy it from them. While you're renting it, you are paying more than market rent and none of that goes towards anything towards your purchase price of the house when you want to buy. So again, <laughs> if that's your only way to get in, okay, but understand that that's what they do. They will go in, they will buy the house for you it, so that yeah. you can own the house uh, and then you will rent it until you qualify to buy it from them. And they give you a certain uh -huh. time frame by which you have to do that or it's not your house. A, a, a company called Divi, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound trustworthy. I can't lie. A Divi. Like, you guys ever go to the playground and maybe want to Divi up the candy? Yeah, I'm like, Divi, <laughs> wait, hold on. Right? With Divi, they need not again a share, like, this is interest only payments. <laughs> only interest, interest only payments in a house. And you're going to tell, I know you're going to tell everyone that's your house even before you sign documents. Even before you ready, yeah, this is my house right here. Yeah, it's no, it's Divi's. <laughs> it is, it is. It's Divi's. So they are popular down south, and just rent to own in general is something that exists more so down south. Um, and it can because usually it's a homeowner or someone who owns the house outright, or they don't have a lot of debt, so that they can make some money and help you at the same time to get fixed. The, the prices of homes are so expensive up north. There's not enough room for risk, right? If you miss a payment, now they go into foreclosure. It's a bad deal. So it's not really a thing up north. Um, I think Divi is trying to move into the Boston market or into the northern market now. So they will make it a thing. But understand what you're getting into. It's not really rent to own. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. Right. So, right. So, I mean, debunking that out there, they're great promotions, great advertising, but the rent to own just does not exist up here right now. It's not a real thing up here. All right. So, next question. Um, I haven't seen any other questions kind of pop in. People are really appreciating all of the knowledge. Um, all right. People are really trying to find out like how to get started, where to get started. Uh, what was the last program mentioned of after senior help? Uh, Joanna um, already sent that. Joanna okay. uh, put it in the, system, in the chat. Um, thank you, Joe. Um, yeah. All right, so, so check this. So check this. Let me see those sevens if you felt tonight. If you feel good and you feel like, all right, I know where to start. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm less confused. I got some hacks. Next time I do a project, I'm going with pro account. Yes, material contract gonna be mad at me and you. Like, let me see those sevens. Let me see those sevens. Let me see those sevens. Check this. You climbing up a mountain, you got a book bag on, your back hurts, but you gotta reach to the top. You get to the middle of the mountain. I wanna see these sevens. You get to the middle of the mountain and you realize everything in your book bag ain't yours. That's somebody else's stress. Ooh, that's someone else's stress. You start emptying your book bag, guess what? You climb to the mountain even faster. Oh, imagine if you empty your book bag at the bottom, though. Imagine if you empty the book bag at the bottom, though. Let's go. The pro account script. They're All asking for the pro account script. Oh, yeah, pro account script. All we're doing is this. We're going to bank. We're going to Home Depot. You're going to fill out a pro account. Well, all you need is your name and uh, um, your name and your email address and your phone number. That's all you need. All right, boom. Or you could do it online. But if you if you have a contractor and, and a contractor is saying, hey, I want to pay for the material. Like, nah, I'll pay for the material. All I need you to do is pick it out. Um, you could show up with them to make sure they only buy material for your spot. And you pay, right? You go to a pro desk. You can't go to a regular um, register. You have to go to the pro desk. You say, hey, my stuff is over $1,500. I need you to put this in the bid room. I need you to put this in the bid 
room. And when you put this in the bedroom, you need to tell me how much I'm saving. If you go on uh, Alex e. Edwards on my Instagram, if you scroll down, I I always take video when I save money. The last time I think we saved over two thousand dollars, right? So I could only imagine my 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 contract to keeping my money. That hurt. That hurts my feelings. All these years, it was keeping my money. <laughs> All the, oh, material is going to be 10000 Psych. I'm getting like $3,000 back because I got a pro account, Alex. Right? So, yes. And Alex, also, um, just to kind of... So, people out there know that I do have an investment group where we actually purchased a property in Brockton. I'm very excited. All my members are excited also. Um, as a female, I know some ladies out there, they might not feel comfortable going to Home Depot, getting that Pro Tools account. But Alex, can you also mention as an investment piece of property and you have that receipt emailed to you from the Pro Tools, how does that benefit them when it comes to their tax time? Oh, good question. Good question. And we were supposed to go over and maybe next time I come back, we were supposed to go over a landlord form um, and I forgot. But, but, ooh, that's on my landlord form. Good question. So, I, hold on, I, let me find it. Oh, look, we gonna, uh, sweetheart, I'm gonna right, be so home I'm late tonight. <laughs> sweetheart, I'm gonna be home late tonight. Let's go. <laughs> mm. For any of you that are purchasing an investment property, and you want to make sure you go to that Home Depot, get your Pro Tools account. I was able to get mine and yep. you can do it from home. You can call, yep. they will email you a receipt for your materials. But Alex, what do you do with that receipt during tax season? Wait, but, but it's, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. They will email you to, for that address, right? Because when you at the Pro account, you have to say, the Pro Desk, you have to say, this is for 123 Street. Right. So now every time you shop for one, two, three street, Home Depot is now your your accountant. Right. So now they're going to put together a sheet for only one, two, three street. So now look, look, accountant, this is my sheet from Home Depot. Kaboom. Right. So. So. Here we go. Here we go. Let me see. All right. We're going we're gonna to go. We're going to go so fast. All right. So check this. Ooh, I love this. I, you you have to take pictures of this. You got whatever you need to do. You need to. This is a thumbprint form, right? And this is if you already own a home or you about Look, to own. Hold a on, home. One, hold on one second, Britt. Can you give Alex the right to control the um the the slide the the document? Hold on a second. So I didn't even know we could do that. I got okay. restless kids. I just gotta figure them out. <laughs> You should have access now. I don't. I don't think I can control her computer. Um, your computer. Um, I'm gonna put it. Let me see if I could attach the document in the chat, and then you can open it that way. They are losing their little minds. Okay. We we're supposed to end at seven thirty. <laughs> it's like we ever end on time for anything that's funny. I, I thought it was eight i'm sorry it is, it's eight o'clock that we usually end but we don't it's like we don't even end then so i just okay. i just sent the document in the um all right so i'll stop sharing all right so let's see if this will work So while you guys wait, Alex is just um, in the process of pulling up the landlord um, checklist that we have available for any of our uh, second home or investment home or multifamily um, 
purchasers. This checklist is actually really great because it helps you stay on track with being a great landlord to all your tenants. I'm a strong believer of any great landlord also has great tenants. There's a great relationship between the two and it keeps the whole process, the whole cycle of the home um, just kind of flowing very easily, very well. Okay, let me just download this again. I'll download this. Okay. And yes, uh, Fabrice, any of the slides from today will be um, emailed to anyone who actually registered for tonight's Zoom. Uh, George is awesome at dropping all that info in the chat. So you can get that and be able to register so you receive the slides from tonight. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna make this happen fast. Um, this is a landlord checklist. This is the stuff that you should be doing as a landlord. If you have a, a family member that could use this form as a thumbprint, realty form, but it's all good. Um, you can share it with them, um, but this, this is smart things you should do, right? So after we close, what should we do? Definitely change your mailing uh, address. Some, it, it sounds easy, but some people just forget. They don't just prepare to kind of like, let me, go, let me go change my mailing address, right? Your water bill, electric company, you gotta change these names, turn them off, because you know someone move in like, wait a minute, we still have lights? I didn't put it in my name. Is it your name? They still using that, right? Oil companies, you have to change the lock ASAP, right? Right away. Um, you see it right there. We spoke about it today. Today, connect with Mass Save right away. Um, we talked that we talked about the lending programs from the city of Boston. We spoke about that today. So, and uh, that's 617-635-HOME, 617-635-HOME. That's the number to the home center, right? The home center has all the programs you need when, when it comes to um, getting a loan or grants to fix something, de-letting, um, the 3D program, the lead safe, 617-635-HOME. Um, that is the home center, 617-635-HOME, right? Introduce yourself to your tenants, right? Um, have a party, whatever you need to do, but make sure you know who's living with you or living in your home. This is extremely important. Remember, you, you, you're taking over something. So you're kind of, you are the new person, right? So be nice, introduce yourself. That's extremely important because you want your tenants to be on your side. I know Massachusetts, um, you, you kind of have to pick one tenants or landlord, but we all could be together. I, I, I truly believe that, right? Um, yes, you definitely want to, Set up your mortgage payments. Um, make sure you you know who you're paying. Make sure you know when you're paying, right? Um, what's cool that I'm putting together now is a, is a sheet where all my mortgages is on one sheet, what I pay, rents, who's living in that particular home, um, the mortgage company's name, um, the rate. So I could just look at one sheet and I could look at all my homes and see who's making more, who's making more money, what needs to be improved. How, so it's, it's just better for me to kind of just understand all my moving parts, right? Because it's easy to lose track of anything. Um, so I just want to see. This is extremely important. You have to write rules for your home, right? Um, and it's not treating people like children, but you're just letting them know, I care about this home and I care about your safety. So let's make rules for the other person, for that person, for me as well. We just wanna make sure that we put together a, 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 um, some rules and we also wanna put your your name, right? Right in the hallway. So your contact, hey, um, Alice Edwards, I'm the owner. This is my phone number, this is my email address. If anything goes wrong, please contact me. It shouldn't be hard to pay you and it should be hard to, to, to uh, let you know that something uh, something is wrong, right? Um, all right, so bills. This is extremely important. I think for per home, you should have a count number, a count per home, right? So now you say, again, I go to Home Depot, I'm using 123 Street. I go down to Best Buy. If I need to buy something for one, two, I'm using that debit card. And the reason why you need to buy an account for each home, two reasons. This is why I use it. One, I'm not going back 
for my accountants to, for receipts. I'm not doing that. Look, this is my statements. Figure it out. It's only for this home. So you'll see exactly what I bought all year. It's only for that particular home. And so what I did to keep track on, if, if you go to your bank, you they can't put like, you, I don't want you to open business accounts, it's regular accounts for your home. If if it's if it's not a business, if it's not under LLC, if it's under your name, you go Alex e. Edwards, then it says 74. So I know that that card is 74 123 Street, right? I know because the, the debit card, it says Alex e. Edwards 74. So now I know and I identifying with that particular card, I know is that particular house. Does that make sense? If um, drop a seven, if that makes sense, or am I going too fast, you could drop a zero. Um, so now I got my expenses good. Um, I'm great. I've got my accountants. They, they happy. All right. I know what I'm paying. I got everything this in my, I got everything, uh, down pat. So what's another, another thing is point. I hate knocking Sunday. Hey, it's pay, give me my rent. I don't like that. I, I can't, I don't like that. It's not, I, I'm, I'm not built like that. Right. So I want you to, I want you to deposit my rent. So you could use Zelle. Um, I'll give you deposit slips. You could go to your nearest uh, bank and it's deposit in my account. That's what I saw. Now I know one for you, you have a receipt. It's simple for you. So now you have a receipt. You could tell everybody how much you pay rent or, or when you do your taxes, right? And I'm not chasing you. I'm not chasing you, right? So so that that's extremely important to kind of divide your, your homes up into bank accounts. So you actually know what's going on financially all around when you do your taxes um, and, and when you're getting paid and, and when you have to shop for, for certain things, right? Um, so collect your rent, we kind of went over that. Security deposit, we know we have to put in a special account where you cannot touch it at all. Um, um, and that's about it for there. Yep, we made that, we talked about make it easy for tenants to pay rent. We just went over that, provide a bank account. We just went over that. Oh, the locks, right? So locks, we have, oh, that's my jacket. So it's, it's special locks where only you can make a copy, right? You need an ID to make a copy of this lock. Why is this important? Because um, when I didn't have this lock, I'm seeing people just open up my door like, yo, oh, you, you coming in here? You, oh, you want me to hold the door for you, Alex? Don't I don't know who that person is, right? And again, is again is important to understand and keeping everybody safe that everybody don't have your, your 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 keys. Imagine if they lose the key, they just go down the street and make another one, right? So now you don't even know who has um, the keys to your home. So how I solved that problem? I went down uh, to the to the locksmith on Adam Street, right? And I said, hey, I need this special key. No one can make a copy of this key unless they have this ID. All right, Alex, no problem. You know how many tenants call me and say, hey, I went to Home Depot and I can't make a copy of the key. Why you need a copy of the key? It's, it's only two adults. Why do you need more keys? Well, sometimes my mother-in-law come over. All right, bet. Yo, the key costs 20 bucks. All right, never mind. <laughs> Right. And we have to make sure we get these key deposits. Right. Say, hey, I'm going to give you three keys. These three keys, I'm, I'm going to charge you twenty dollars each. I'm going to charge you fifty dollars each. But if you hand my keys back, I will give you that money once you leave. I'll give you that money because you don't want the money. You actually just want the key back so you don't have to go change the locks. Right. That's what you really want. They can't make copies. So you already know if you get two keys back, they don't have any more keys. That makes sense, right? Drop a seven if that makes sense. If I'm going too fast, um, I know we have eight more minutes, but drop a seven if that makes sense. Um, but again, this is some stuff I know you probably never heard before standing on the landlord side, but that's why I'm here. This is why Denisha asked me to come, Britt and Michelle asked me to come. This is why I'm here. I'm here for you to, to show you everything I do. And if, if you was our client, this is what I'll provide. A lot of you probably work with different agencies or going to work with different agencies. I still think you you deserve this, this document, right? This is another thing. Don't wait until something something's break. Like, oh man, I need a plumber. Yo, you need a plumber. Uh, you, you, yeah, I know a plumber, but it's two o'clock in the morning. He ain't coming now, right? 
You have to build your team right away. Get that plumber, get that electrician, right? You have to build your team away right away. Get that eviction um, attorney. You have to build your team right away. Don't wait. Get your CPA. Don't wait until that's that's bad. That's not well. That's not well thinking. That's broke thinking. Don't wait until it's, it's a problem to say I need this. No, get ahead of the game, right? Get ahead of the game. And the reason why I came up with these rules because I waited. I don't want you to make the same mistake. I waited. I went through this problems. That's why I'm not perfect. I, but something happened. I'm like, man, let me write this down. Let me put this. I got to write this down. And I got to share it with my people. Because I don't want no one to take advantage of my people. I got to share this with my people, right? I want to tell you something real slick. If you know a home inspector, right? A Boston home inspector. This is, watch this. This, this is crazy. You go to the building inspector and say, building inspector. Who would you refer as a plumber? Write down that name. Who would you refer as an electrician? Write down that name. Who would you refer as a GC? Write down that name. So now you know the building inspector is giving you all these names. You're not going, you most likely not going to have any issues because the, the building inspector don't have no issues with this particular person. That makes sense? Who wouldn't, who out of everybody, who would tell you if Oh, no, I wrote that person up a thousand times. Don't rock with that person. Or that person is always late on their job. That in the building inspector, right? Another way, I always pull over. If someone's doing work, I'm up in their house. I go, what y'all doing up here? Okay, what's your name? Let me, let me get a card. Now I'm looking and seeing what they're doing and how they're doing. So I know someone's doing wrong. You put it up, she rock like that. No, I don't want to work with you. Class I like, well, you, you use the stilts. If you, if you go on my Instagram, you see people using stilts, guess how I found them? I ran up into someone's house. That's how I found them. And they was on stilts. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. I need this at my project. They came to my project and did the same exact thing, right? So if you see anyone doing work, pull over, see what they're doing, right? If you see someone in traffic at Home Depot, take a picture of their van, right? And, and just say, hey, can you bid for bid on this? Regis is the king of this. Regis, I promise you, I hope any no contractors is on here tonight. But I am if you are if you are a uh if you are a plumber, Regis bid 10 of you. 10 of you. If you're an electrician, he probably bid 15. Like he said, I want bids, I want bids from 15 of you. It, like it's something I'm like, yo, yo, Regis, you're bugging. By the time you actually pick one, you're gonna forget who you picked. Like it's crazy, right? But that's he's he that's what he does. He's like, yo, I'm bidding, everyone can get it. I'm not making a decision until I talk to a hundred people, right? So it's, a, it's, it's extremely important to do this way before because look, you have a leaking pipe. You can't bid, you can't get 15 bids. You need that fixed right away. So now that first person that ripped you off, you're gonna be like, look, I need it. Like, I can't, I, I can't, I can't do nothing. I need it. So this is why it's extremely important to put your team together right away, right? Is extremely, it's just put it right away. Alex, right? can you also speak to the importance of um, new homeowners, new landlords actually saving for that rainy day uh, repair? Yep, yep. yep. Um, I would say this. How much I like to say business, I mean, my my homes is, they, they businesses, right? They are businesses, but I would, I would also say is just like your income, you shouldn't spend all your income. You shouldn't spend all your income, right? Um, I think you should write down how you're going to spend your rent and how you're going to spend your income. If you say, hey, I'm going to put 10% into stock market or investments, do that, right? But also I'm going to I'm gonna put something into a rainy day fund where I need to pay uh, for, for these maintenance issues, right? I think every time you get a paycheck, I think you should divide it up and kind of just just keep it in your mind to kind of it's it, it it it's it's tedious but it's the right thing to do it's it, and it's hard when I, I look at a couple of accounts i'm like man that account have money but this account don't have money and that account need money and that account have a problem where i'm gonna get this money from it's hard right because it's like technically that business don't have any money that home don't have any money because someone moved out or I had, I had to fix something, do a new porch, and I spent all, all, the, all, all the rainy funds, right? So you really have to treat it like that. And I just, you have, like, each home is your child. And you have to, if you send them to college, different topic, if you send them to college, then 
you each home is a college fund then, and you can't take from one child to get to the other. So you have to be prepared, right? If that answers your question, Britt. Yes, thank you. Honestly, another thing, check in with your, with your agent, with your agents, with your tenants, right? Don't be scared of your tenants. Don't, oh, I don't wanna go over there as long as they pay, I don't care. Go in. I want, I want to be honest with you. I'm going to be a hundred with you. I went to my, one of my properties last week. <laughs> I walked upstairs. And I walked in. It is like a marker throughout the entire house. Right. And it says it has God come get me devil, this devil, that. Right. So I'm like, damn. So I just renovated this unit. It didn't, it didn't hurt me. It didn't get, I didn't get mad. I'm like, yo, just something might be going on with this person. You know, let me, let me call some, some family and friends. Let me, let me see, if, you know, if this person need help, whatever. And I didn't get mad. Right. It's, I'm not mad because of the security deposit. And I rather about the person is, is might be going through something. Right. But if I never went up there, I would have never found out. And something could have happened worse. We're just talking about marker. I'm going to, no, I supposed to repaint it anyway when someone else move in, right? But you have to not pop up how you doing. If your tenant is cool, if not, tell them, hey, I'll be at your house in the next 48 hours, the next 24 hours, right? That's cool. Just pop up. But just don't be a stranger at your own home. Because when they don't see anyone, just like a job site, when you don't see anyone, they're going to do what they want to do. They're going to do what they want to do. They don't see you. Oh, you don't ever come by? I'm going to go do what I want to do, Right? If you just pop up randomly, like I'm, I, it's it's you more like all right, this this guy always pop up randomly. You probably want to do that, right? That makes sense. Can I just? You yep. can't just roll up on your tenants and walk in the apartment, though. You do have to give notice. Yo, that's why I said yeah. That's why I said I said now if your tenant is not is not cool like mine, it's like hey, come in and I like yo. No, no, no. So some people, I will say my father-in-law has rental property and he thinks he could just roll up any time of day. Don't just show up and go through. I'm like, you can't do that. You have to give them notice and let them know that you're coming. So you cannot, when you become a landlord, just go and walk through a house. Like it, you don't just walk through. You still have to let them know that you're going to be there. That's all I was trying to make the point. I, he, it took a <laughs> while for him. Older people don't like to be told what to do. So yep, even yep. though I'm in real estate, he he doesn't care what I have to say. I'm like that. If she called the cops on you, you you get in trouble because yep. you're rolling up in her place at this moment. Nope. And then um, tenants are scared to tell you they're leaving or they're unhappy, right? Um, so you might in nine months, hey, are you happy or not? If, are you leaving? What's up? Right. Let them tell you, yeah, I can't afford this unit anymore. I'm leaving. All right. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry you're leaving, but do you mind if I show the unit while you're here? Be prepared. All right, be prepared. You have to be prepared, right? And after that, this everything else you could just kind of read on your own. But those are those are what we wanted to show you. Um, and if this particular, sorry, if this particular document helped you, again, let me see some sevens. If this particular document helped you, um, you now you have it. Let me see some sevens. Because again, if, if this document helped you, now I'm like, all right, Denisha, all right, Britt, all right, Michelle, we need to now write more things down so we can help the community. We have to help the community, right? I, I'll just be mad, I can't lie. If you're working with somebody like <coughs> Keller Williams, right? And they have this, they now have this particular document and they just take my name, they take the thumbprint off and blah, I did it. Blah, that was, that was kind of weak, right? We did this for you and you, you shared it with everybody. Eh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't respect it, but you got to do, you could do what you want. Um, but yeah, this is, this is, this is a document you kind of want to follow because you never know until something happens. Right. And, and what we want to do is prevent like, all right, don't worry. I already got a plumber. <laughs> I got a maintenance guy. <laughs> Yeah, I went to Thumbprint. You know, I, I, I got this document. They told me everything. I'm prepared. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You you can't make copies. I'm sorry. You can't make copies. I, I went to Thumbprint. They got me prepared. They told me you was going to make copies. Now you can't make copies, right? This is this is the idea. This is why we put these these documents together and we put um um well Denisha 
uh, Britt and Michelle put these 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 programs together. And I must shout out um, Thumbprint Cares because they 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 wonderful again. <laughs> building Black Wealth, Thumbprint Cares, Thumbprint, uh, uh, Boss Lady News, uh, Michelle. This is like this is how it looks. We all connected some way somehow. And this is why we're so powerful and, and so important. So important, right? Like, let's let's really think about this. We've been here for about two hours. Did you learn, did you learn more today than if you took the first time home buyers class? Drop some sevens. Did you learn more today? There you go. I just needed one. My head's like this. I already seen this is the most sevens I've ever got. So I'm, my head's already big, but this is what I'm talking about, right? And this is how it looks when we come together and say, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, let's do this for the neighborhood, right? I was going through this and I noticed that, I noticed that um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a document asking for some money, Right, saying if you want to donate to keep this going, right? That's what I noticed when I was going through the doc. Am I wrong? We appreciate you mentioning that. Yes, donation. Um, donation, are always right? Welcome. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Ah. All right. So check this. If I could get, if I could get, we're going to talk simple money, right? If I could get ten people to do donate twenty dollars, twenty bucks. That's two hundred dollars. I'm going to match the two hundred dollars. Just ten people. I'm not ten people. If you like what happened today, I'm not getting paid. Pay me now. But it's going to the it's going to the movement, right? If you if you like what you heard today and you want more, right? Just twenty bucks. I'm not asking for. I'm not asking for fifty, a hundred. We asking for twenty bucks. If you, I will match up to two hundred. We got to put clause. <laughs> We got to put clause in this up to 200, right? Up to 200. And I would also say this, whoever shared this the most tonight, right? I'll give you until, we'll give you until, nine o'clock. You can share this after it ends, right? All right, whoever shared this yes, the most, absolutely. whoever shared this the most, I'm going to donate another hundred dollars on your behalf and we're gonna have my man christian put together something and be like yo this person donated a hundred dollars let's go they're about the movement so keep track of that money so that's three hundred dollars out of my pocket right that's three hundred <laughs> all right all right this is a write-off this is advertisement it, it, i'm 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 i won't give it to you guys or give it to irs so i'd rather give it i know y'all so i'm going to give it to you you guys right so if we could if we could play that game that'd be great whoever shared it the most between now and nine o'clock or at beginning to to, to nine o'clock they go another hundred dollars on your behalf to your organization uh denisha and, and michelle uh -huh. and Britt. um there you go Thank you, Tony, Latanya. Donated. yo she's a boss anyway so like let's go cool fellas the lady is the first one to know. Come on, man. George, drop that money. Show them how it's done, George. Let's see another mm -hmm. one, female. Come on, Thank fellas. You, Come on, <laughs> fellas. Come on, fellas. Come on. Don't do me like this, fellas. Don't do me like this, fellas. I and so you guys so know every single month, every single month, you guys can find us um, on Facebook. Please do register so that we can make sure you're in the loop of any resources, yep. any flyers, any upcoming events that you should be at or be aware of. You yep. can always go to Our Village Initiative on Facebook, Vincent. like Alex is saying, and make sure you share this as well. Shout out Vincent. I got, I got my fella in here. My man, <laughs> Big V. Thank you. Yo, Vincent always follows me, always shout me out. I appreciate you, young man. Thank you so much. But yeah, I had a I had a pleasure speaking with you. I had a blast tonight. Um, again, if 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 um, you have any other questions, um, please please reach out to Denisha, uh, reach out to Boss Lady, reach out to Michelle. Um, I had three other speaking engagements, and I had to save my energy for this particular one because I definitely wanted to show up. I called Denisha. We spoke about a few times this this today, 
because I was I was extremely excited. I can't, yo, we need to add this. We need to add this. Let's go. Here comes these twenties. We need to add this. We need to add. We need the people to know this, Denisha. We need. Nah, nah. We don't have enough. We don't have enough. We need to do this. And and that was just my energy all all day because I was again. I was just. I was so excited to be here, right? And this is not my first time, but it's just when I talk to my people, it's different, right? I I feel like I know all of you. I know what y'all going through. I know what's going to happen. I know how much how much pressure is on your back. And to my fellas, I know that you might not make it home. Like that feeling. And to my women giving giving births and, and their, their, their bodies change and then y'all still beautiful. And, and y'all might not get the same pay that we get. I know what y'all going through. And that's just why I wanted to talk to my people, man. I'm, I'm getting emotional. I know we, we, we to the end, but this is why I wanted to talk to my people. Because it's something we could either make it happen right now or we'll never make it happen. We'll never make it happen. We'll never, I'm telling you, I don't talk loud to show off. No, no, no. I want to talk loud so you can be like, yo, I, I want to ask some questions. I know anyone here ever called me and asked me a question. Did I ever be like, oh, you didn't use thumbprint. So why are you asking me? I never did that. Never. Because I want you to win no matter what. I don't care who you use. I will clown you if you use other people, but I won't be like, yo, th that's wrong. No, you bought a home. As long as you bought a home, I'm with it. You, I still buy you a gift, right? Because I'm I'm happy that, that you're moving forward. Yo, look at all these donations. Let's go. Let's go. I I'm, I'm loving it, but I'm happy you're moving forward. But this is the time. You see what pandemic, because the U.S. could wipe you out if they wanted you, if, if they wanted to. The landlords, it was about 20% of landlords not getting rent. It was about oh, how many people laid off. Look how much power someone else have on your finances, how you feed your children, how you, how you, how you pay for shelter. Let's go, Lisa, right? Look how many, so it's, it's your moment to, to work on yourself. You have to work on yourself. You have to work on yourself. Look yourself in the mirror. I asked you to write some stuff down at the beginning. Write that down. I asked you to talk to yourself in the past. I asked you to talk to yourself um, in the future, right? See, all I want you to do, I want, I want the person you are to match a person you know you could be. That's all I want. I just want you to just, just match it, right? Because you know we always have that fight. Like, man, I know I could be better. But why I can't be better? Because this, this, this. Forget about the because. Just be better. Be better. I spoke to my father. And my father, I didn't speak to my father for 20 years. I said, look, I'm willing to forget about the, the, the last 20 years if you could, if moving forward, you could become a better person. Because I, I don't want to remember the 20 years. I want to remember what, what you did yesterday. I want to give you that. I want to give you that opportunity. It's going to take time, but I want to give you that opportunity. And I, that made me think about myself. That made me think about my people. Forget what they say to us on, about us on the news on Fox 25. I, I, I want to know what we're doing now. I want to know what we're doing now because there's a lot of pain, right? There's a lot of pain we're going through. But with that pain, don't let, don't let the pain hold you back from providing financially to yourself. Don't stand in one place and say, they won't show me or they won't teach me. Go take, go take, go take, go learn, go execute. This is what I want you to do, right? This is what I want you to do. And, th and th again, this is why they brought me here. This is why they brought me here. I know it's late. I can keep talking, but again, oh, oh, more money coming in. I don't know if I should keep talking. This is this is up to y'all getting paid tonight. Y'all getting paid tonight. That's what I'm talking about. This can I just say thank you. Thank yep. you so much, Alex. Uh, you are a brother. So thank you. You are family. Um, we really, really appreciate all of the gem drops, all of the information, all of the love, all the passion. He's, he's brushing his hair right, like oh, on show me, show Uncle right. Thumper those, <laughs> showing Uncle Thumper those ways. Um, no, thank you, and thank you, everyone, for contributing um, to our efforts to kind of keep these sessions going and provide information to you guys. Um, let us know. I think I have to look forward a survey. We'll send out a survey. Um, just for your feedback on how this session was, I think I saw tons of sevens, so I know it was great. Um, but really, kind of the the whole series and what information you guys want to. Excuse me. 
<laughs> what information you guys want to see um, or learn more about. Uh, we want to keep this where, again, we're bringing information for you to take action. So it's not where you come and feel good, but like you actually now go execute on some things. That's what lets us know it's a success. So we really do want to thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Britt, uh, for being my tech person because I suck at technology. <laughs> I am really bad. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Joanna and Thumbprint Cares. Thank you, Michelle. And we hope that you are resting and feeling better. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate you all. Thank you.